Hello everyone and welcome to my sewing corner. This is episode five in the DIY couture series, all about lining, where I show you how I'm sewing, or how I did sew, a couture dress at home. Now as you can see here, the lining is in the dress, it's completely finished, and I'm gonna show you the technique of how to put it in by hand. So putting the lining actually together, we're gonna skip over that step because it's gonna be just the same as constructing the dress and then getting the pieces thread traced and marked is the same as the underlining. So just trace each of your pattern pieces and then you'll cut them out and stitch all the darts on the skirt and the bodice on your sewing machine and then assemble the bodice and assemble the skirt, put them together and you have the lining ready to be put into the dress. So I'm gonna be picking up from that point when it's the lining's constructed and we're gonna be hand stitching it in. The techniques that we're gonna be using to put the lining into the dress are a fell stitch and all of the neckline and the arm along the zipper and even on the little vent on the back, that's all done with a fell stitch right on the edge. And then serving as an understitch, doing it by hand, we're gonna be doing a pick stitch about a half inch or so away from the very edge to keep everything from shifting around those points where you don't want your lining to kind of peek out if it's a little bit looser. I'm gonna take you right into the tutorial and show you on the swatch with contrasting threads so you can see everything. If I showed you on this, it kind of just all blends in because the thread matches the fabric. So I'm gonna show you every technique on this swatch and then I'll show you how I did the hem with the dress. So let's just get right into these techniques. Here my swatch is prepared the way my dress is at the end of the last video for the assembly. All of the seam allowances are stitched and the stay stitching is right on the edge or slightly on the inside. And then I'm going to create all my lining pieces with my pattern pieces the same. And here I've just thread traced it and then I'm going to do stay stitching on the machine and if you need any extra stabilization on silky fabrics like this you can use tissue paper but you'll just stitch anywhere you need to stay stitch. So here I've done the stitching around the whole border and then I'm just going to tear away this parchment paper Tissue paper is a little easier to rip, but this is what I had. So you'll just remove that completely. And then you can remove all of your thread tracing. And then you can clip all of your seam allowances to however thick you want them to be. With my dress, I left them at an inch, but for this little swatch, I wanted it to be smaller. And then I'm just clipping into that seam allowance so that when I turn it inward, it can move freely. So then I'm just going to turn it to where the stitching is slightly on the inside. And I'll just turn that corner and then pin it into place, bringing both of the stay stitching lines as close together as I can. And once I match those corners, then I'm just going to evenly distribute the longer edges. And here you can see how those two lines are close together. And you'll just do the same thing on the curve. All of those clippings will help you to achieve a smooth turned curve. Then I'm going to thread my needle and tie an 
a little knot at the end. And then to do the fell stitch, you're going to insert the needle into the seam allowance to kind of bury it into the seam allowance. And then I'm going to take a small little stitch into the lining. So it's just barely in. And then right where the stitch is, I'm going to go down into the seam allowance right next to that and go forward and then up slightly into the lining. And that should look just like a tiny little dash when it's pulled tight. And then I'll go right underneath that stitch and then forward through the seam allowance and then out through the lining, just a tiny little dash. And then you just do that over and over wherever you need to do a fell stitch. And you just see a little small dash of a stitch. So now this is completely stitched and you can see those little teeny flecks of green. But from the front you can't really see anything. To secure your lining from going past that border, you're going to do an understitch by hand. So with your matching thread, you're going to thread the needle again, tie a knot, and then insert your needle in between those two layers and then in about half an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch, depending on where exactly you want it to be. And then you're going to go behind that where you came out into the lining just a little bit and then forward, however far apart you want your stitches to be. It could be three eighths of an inch up to a half of an inch. And you're just going to stitch slightly behind it and then forward the half inch. So just keep going back just a touch all the way around the border and you'll see little small dashes. And then when you come to the starting stitch, you'll come out right where the hole is that you first took your stitch. And here I'm just showing you that it doesn't shift on the border. So you'll just come out where you first began that stitch and then just do a couple stitches into place right over that first one that you created and then come out through the edge and clip off any excess thread. So this is fully understitched and when it matches you can't see those little dots. And then to secure the hook and the eye, I just do a little blanket stitch multiple times around the loops to secure it down. So on the hook, first I'm going to secure the hook so that it kind of holds itself into place. So I'm just gonna do a little straight stitch over the middle of the hook. Just to position it. So you can see that thread just goes right over the hook. And that's just to hold it into place. And then when I like the position of it, I'm going to begin doing my blanket stitches through that opening. So from the outside going through the hole, I'm going to insert it and then the loop that it creates before I pull it tight. I'm going to go down through that loop and then pull it tight. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to go from the outside through the hole and then down through that loop, making sure that I don't twist that loop.
and you're just gonna do this several times as you go around that loop of metal. And the more times you do it, kind of the nicer and cleaner it looks. So I just keep doing it several times. Here I'm just going to show it slow once more, just because you can kind of see with the contrast of the fabric how that goes. That's what it looks like when you do both. And then you have your hook and eye attached. Okay, so after that, you'll have everything connected on the top. So you'll do a fell stitch on the zipper. This is sewn together and a fell stitch around the opening of the vent. And let me take this off so you can see how I bagged out the lining to attach it to the shelf. So on the bottom of the dress, you don't want this to be totally tight on the bottom so you won't do a fell stitch right here because then the lining when you're moving or sitting down it might actually pull on the dress from the outside. So what you're going to do is you're going to create this slightly little bit of a bag to where there's movement of the lining without doing anything to the outside. So I'm going to lay this down and I'll show you how I did that. The dress will already have been hemmed and then the lining will come down and line up with the bottom of this and you're just going to tuck it back up to where you have an inch or so maybe an inch and a quarter just depending on how high you want it to go up and how deep of a hem you have on this fabric instead of stitching right down here onto this you're going to want to give this a little bit of wiggle room so you'll pull this up still folded and do a running stitch through here all the way along the hem until you get to the vent and that way there's a lot of movement but this will never slide down below the hem no matter how it pulls it just has this perfect little bit of wiggle room so I'll flip this over to the vent so here I just have done the fell stitch continuing down to this point and I kind of just met up the point, so I did a fell stitch to the bottom. And then right about here is where I started my running stitch. And I just kind of curved back to meet, meet that point, because you don't need a lot of wiggle right here. So it just angled a little bit. And same thing on this side. And this is fell stitched up to this point. And then here I just stitched all of this together. And here you can see on the zipper, this is fell stitched as well. And then if you don't want to do an eye on here or it's not reaching, you can sew a thread bar in place of an eye so it can hook like that. Either an eye or a thread bar does the same thing. So it's up to you. Okay, so now the lining is in and the dress is completely finished. In the next video, the final video, I'm gonna be showing you what it looks like on and how it moves and kind of my wrapping up thoughts about the dress. And spoiler, I love it. It's perfect. It's everything I hoped it would be. And I'm so excited to have shared this whole process with you. I hope you really enjoy it. You can let me know down below in the comments section what you would like to make or what you learned from this video series. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Until next time, go get creative and make something that you love. Bye.